Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I wanted to show how to do compositing with Photoshop and we're going to start out with Lightroom. Now this is something that's very common in real estate photography but it also can be done for a lot of fun stuff. For instance, something like this. <laughs> that's kind of just a, uh, an example of what can happen. It's actually just multiple shots. How are they blended together in Photoshop? Now, the most important thing, besides just trying to do this for fun, um, if you're doing this for real estate, the reason behind it is a lot of times you can't get your lights where they need to be. So you can get by with having, for instance, um, some light shining through on one side of the room, but it's better if it's over on the other, and how do you even that out? Well, the idea is that you take multiple pops, and you can then composite this together. So you might have seen me do this something similar similar to this when I was doing that shower pop a few videos back. But I wanted to show how to do compositing and also let you know it can be done for other things besides real estate, but we're going to concentrate on that today. So you ready to take a look at how it's all done? Let's get started. All right, so we're going to take four different shots. This is from a shoot just here recently a couple days ago. And we've got, uh, and this is going to be similar to a lot of the flambient stuff that you've seen me do for real estate. But we've got an ambient shot here, and this is nice. You can see that we want this to look better because we want to be able to see the outdoors. We don't have true colors. You can see how there's orange cast going everywhere. So we're going to be using lights, but at least we've got our ambient shot to get started. So then what we do is I've got a, um, another shot where I would start off with my initial flash. Now obviously I'm not going to be in this picture and it looks like I'm doing surgery because I'm walking through this house with uh, booties on. Um, but what I've done is I've got my um, Explore 600 behind the camera so it's not viewed in this picture but that's lighting this room. Now it wouldn't be enough because I can't cast light then into the what is this empty dining room and if I tried to there would be a whole bunch of shadow that would be going across because of this beam right here. So one light is lighting the room I in so I've got the um, you know, nice color, and you can see that orange cast immediately went away that was on the walls, and I've got now a, uh, a true color. But I'm in the picture. I've got a great light that's on this side of the room, but what I do then is real quick, so after I do the ambient shot, and after I take this shot, I just walk over to the other side of the room and do it again. And now I've got this side over here that's good. So that's good, and that's the basics of compositing what we're going to need for footage. I'll show you how then we blend that together in Photoshop. Lastly then, uh, we're going to composite in a, a window pole. And you've seen me do this plenty of other times on videos. And interesting thing here, you'll notice how I am uh, leaning down. And this is also a trick you can use a lot of times when you're trying to overexpose for doing a window pole, which is what this is for, is that uh, you'll get reflections in here. Sometimes if you angle down, remember the angle of incidence, will allow you to kind of avoid then reflections that come in glass. Something that also is done when you're doing portrait work with uh, people that were wearing glasses. So anyways, uh, what we do, let's go ahead and do like I normally do. I do a, a pre a bump, uh, it's called uh, Takina 16 to 28 does that and you can see then once again what that does. The only thing it did in Lightroom, it added some sharpening which I normally add but the biggest thing is it enabled profile corrections, chromatic aberrations and of course then it did the vertical. And that's all that I'm going to worry about for now. I like the look of that. There's probably a little bit off here in rotation I could fix. In fact if I wanted to do that I'd just go into manual and I'd go rotate and I'd go about negative 0.1 and that looks good. Okay. So if I did that, just a very slight adjustment, maybe I could do more. But anyways, then what I normally do, right click, develop settings, copy settings. You've seen me do this a lot of other times. I do this instead of sync, why? A lot of other things because I can change things later, not worry about syncing. I've got a standard workflow. And of course, don't sync the white balance. Don't copy that setting, okay? So I go ahead and copy that. I'm gonna highlight all these pictures down here on the bottom, all those frames, right click, develop settings, and then paste settings. So that's all taken effect and then we just right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So those are all going to load up into Photoshop and of course once we save it it'll go back into Lightroom. Now once these are loaded up I could do um, an alignment. You've seen me do this on a lot of other videos. I'm not going to concentrate so much on that today. It would be important though to make sure that your alignment is there and if necessary then you can auto align layers and of course you know from prior videos I've got an action that does that. In this case too I was on a hardwood floor. Carpet can be a, a nasty thing. Uh, but on hardwood floor I've got a real solid tripod, tripod head and I know it didn't really move hardly at all. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and just take this top layer. He's going to be our ambient layer. 
And right now I'm just going to go ahead and set him to luminosity mode, but hide him, layer mask hide, and we'll worry about him later. Okay, so now I've got these shots here. I've got me just on one side of the room, me on the other side of the room, and those are the two that we're basically going to be compositing together. We'll do the window pull and ambient in just a little while. So first thing I'm going to do to him is just go layer, mask, hide. Then I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to use a 10% flow, kind of a big brush. And at 10% flow, and you can see that's up here, 10% flow, and I'm just going to go ahead and start painting that guy in. So once I do that, you can see me, I vanish as though I'm in a Star Trek transporter and I all of a sudden disappear someplace. I'll get rid of the extra light. And there you go. We've got a nice composite now. So without that uh, mask in there, this is what we had. And of course, masking it in. Now, I can take a look too that if I want to mask in a little bit of hardwood floor reflection. Sure enough, there's a little bit over here. I'm gonna get that also. So anything else that you want to, you go to the uh, mask, shift click, and you can see what it looks if you have that mask disabled. So anything else that you wanted to add in there, and I think that looks good, maybe a little bit more getting rid of this reflection on the hardwood floor. Okay, so that's the basics of what we need there. Now let's take a look at what ambient would do to it, to add a little bit of ambient to it. Now we probably don't need much here, but I'm gonna go ahead and shift click on our uh, luminosity layer in ambient and see if there's anything. You know, maybe just a little bit to get rid of this flashiness on the outside of the room. So let's go ahead and we'll take a brush, 10% flow, and we'll just lightly brush in a little bit of ambient so we don't make it look so flashy. Now we've got some natural looking stuff. And I've gotten some questions before about how do I make sure my white balance is the same between my ambient shot and between my flash shots? Well, you don't have to worry about it. If it's in luminosity mode, there is no color. So that makes it easy. So I'm just gonna brush in just a little bit of that ambient. And you could do this to your heart's content. Okay, maybe a little bit on the ceiling too makes it look a little natural coming in. Okay, now we'll just do the window pull real quick. I'm gonna take that layer all the way up to the top. I'm gonna to set his mode as darken. And then we can go layer mask hide. And now this is a beautiful thing. You've seen me do this before um, on other uh, videos where I'm gonna go ahead and take a brush. I'm gonna use a 100% flow on him. And I don't have to worry about getting too even. I don't have to cut this out because in darken mode, Anything that was overexposed, which was everything just about, if it wasn't uh, in uh, darken mode, you can see here that would have been, but darken mode throws that away. So as long as that window pull is in darken mode, you can just quickly paint this in. You don't have to use the pen tool, polygon tool, cut it out, anything like that. It just immediately paints in. Super simple. Once again, I've shown this on a lot of other videos, so I won't belabor the point. Let's go out and take a look at how that all looks. That's not bad. Looking composite. I did, though, overexpose the entire room, so let's just do this window over here. And you can see I'm running all over the place um, around this window. Since it's in darkened mode, I wouldn't worry about it. If it wasn't in darkened mode, it would look awful like that, you can see. But it is in darkened mode, so that's good. Now, there's one other thing here, too, that we want to do. Notice there's a burned out light bulb. So as a little bit of a bonus, I'm going to go ahead and fix that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just flatten everything. So I'm going to go layer, flatten image. That makes it easier then just to work with because we're going to do that later anyways. And I'm going to go ahead and take the quick selection tool and I'm just going to quick select one of these lights right here. And that's probably good enough like that. I'm going to go ahead and do control C, control V that added a new layer you can see over here. Take my move tool and we'll just go ahead and move him over where that light is. If we view that at 100%, that's probably pretty good, not too bad. Um, there's a little bit of uh, you know glare that's not showing on here, so we could even do better. Let's go back here to quick selection. So we've got that quick selected. Let's go ahead and go select, modify, and expand. Let's expand him by about four pixels. Now we've got some glow that's showing around here. We can expand that more. Selection, modify, expand. Let's go another two pixels. And to make sure it feathers off nice, let's go select, modify, feather, and by one pixel. Control C, Control V. We've got a new layer. We move that layer over to where we want it. Now we've got a little bit of a glow. Now some of that doesn't look all natural, so that's easy enough to fix. Layer, mask, hide, and then we go ahead and, excuse me, that should have been layer mask reveal, but we can paint that in. So we'll just use a brush, and you can do it either way. And we'll just use a 10% flow on this, and then we just go ahead and brush in that light right there. That way we get somewhat of a natural looking 
type of light. And if we need to, then we just erase some of those edges off of it so that it doesn't look like an unnatural glow. You can do this to your heart's content, whatever you think is necessary. Quite honestly, a little candle looking uh, a light like this isn't going to matter, so that's good especially from that type of a distance looking at it. So I'm fairly satisfied with that right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and say uh, layer flatten again, and then just do control S to save it. And now it goes back into Lightroom. So now we've got this composited image where before we had the ambient shot that looked like this, and of course was awful, but helped us with light direction. Then we've got uh, a one shot. We've got two shot from the other side, did a window pull, and then we ended up with this. Last thing I would do is one of my presets. For instance, uh, just add a little bit of a bump to it. That looks pretty nice. I might want to up the whites just a, a little bit in that just to make it a little bit brighter. And that looks pretty good. Not too bad, not too shabby. Anyways, that's the basics of compositing. And that's all there really is to it. It's just a matter of taking multiple shots. You can place your light around the room, and then you just take the best of all those worlds and you just kind of paint them in as you need to. Most of the time I find that I can shoot one side of the room, and then I just shoot the other side of a room, and I blend those together, and those usually are well enough for me. Sometimes you might find that you need more, especially if you're working with a room that has a lot of wood or a lot of dark things. You might need to light up the corners, do other things. So it's good to experiment on this. Get yourself into a very difficult position, and you could, if you're on site, really quick take the picture that you're used to doing, but then take just a few practice shots, take an extra three or four minutes of your time to do it, pop it around, and then later on, you can practice with that as you need to while you're doing post-processing. Anyways, I hope this video was useful for you and that you can use some of these techniques for your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. It won't cost you anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care. Be safe and get out there and shoot something.